One of the ultimate goals for most creators is for them to make money through brand partnerships. While I'm constantly preaching the idea of diversifying your income, it's pretty clear that for most creators, brand partnerships typically bring in a large portion of your income. Simply put, there are so many opportunities for you to monetize the type of content that you're creating. But there's a lot to consider when you're deciding who you wanna partner with and for how much you're gonna be partnering with them for. Ultimately, you're either cold pitching or in some way creating a relationship with the brand so that you can monetize your content. Now you might know all of this, but how much of this actually really works? I'm Kristen Busquet and I've been a full-time creator for over three years and I've brought in over $400,000 in brand partnerships and content creation collaborations with brands so far. Social Scoop is the podcast where we teach you, the entrepreneurial creator, to turn your online influence and creativity into a profitable, self-sustaining business. Today, I'm telling you my story on how I've been able to make over $400,000 in brand partnerships. We're giving you the scoop on all things working with brands. This My Biz BFF is Social Scoop. $400,000 is a lot of money. And honestly, if you asked me a few years ago, if I ever thought that I would be in the situation where that's the type of money that I've made through sharing brands that I love on the internet, I would literally look at you like you're insane. So it's so crazy to be here, but today I want to break apart the story of how this actually happened to give you a little bit of perspective. Because I know hearing it, it's like, wow, that's so awesome. Like that must have happened so quick and so easily. Like it sounds so seamless. Obviously, there's a lot behind the scenes that I don't share at the beginning of every single episode when I say that. So today, I want to share with you everything from my first real brand partnership to how I approach brand partnerships today. I originally got my start as an influencer, really intentionally posting content in, I would say, early 2018. Obviously, prior to this, if you've heard my story ever before, you know that I had a blog, you know that I was posting on Instagram, just having fun. And I was actually doing a lot of gifted stuff back then before anyone was really getting paid, especially like if you didn't have millions of followers. And so my first real brand partnership was in, I would say, 2018. And It really is so interesting. I've told this story before. It's a story of exploration and just trying things out to see what happens. So I had a brand approach me in the inbox and this was so exciting to me, obviously, because I'm like, oh my gosh, a brand wants to work with me. They actually are asking me what my rate is. And I obviously had absolutely no idea what I should be charging because I hadn't really charged up to this point. Like brands maybe had offered me like store credits and things like that, but I'd never made like a significant amount of money on a brand partnership at this point. So the brand asked me how much money I would charge for these certain deliverables. It was not a lot of content. Reels weren't even a thing at this point. So they were asking me for some photos. And I had a friend who was also approached by the same brand for the same campaign. And we were really similar creators. So I had literally straight up pull the number out of my ass, guys. I said $250. I don't know. Sounds good. Like I would feel super accomplished getting paid $250 for what I consider something that's really fun. So they immediately accepted, which that's a red flag right there. Side note, if you're immediately getting your numbers accepted, a lot of the time that is typically an indicator that your rate is too low. I had not known this at this point, obviously. So I I go on my merry way, making $250 in this collaboration, having a blast. And it's a big brand too, so I'm feeling really good. I have a conversation with that other creator that was in the same campaign, super, super similar creator to me. And we have a conversation about rates where I find out that she charged $500 and she had been doing partnerships at this point. So I was like, you're kidding me. Like I could have asked for $500 too. That's probably like why they immediately accepted it is because, you know, you're charging 500, I'm charging 250 and we essentially bring the same things to the table. So from that point on, I realized, okay, there is some serious money to be made here. I think at this point I had maybe around 10,000 followers, maybe even a little bit less. And so this was really huge for me to realize that like as a small creator, maybe 10,000 followers, I could be making $500 on a partnership. This is wild. So that really sparked my hustle, I guess. It really sparked my interest in negotiating, learning more about this. Like, how do I, how do I really approach this in a way where I can make a full-time amount of money? 
Because at this point, prior to this, I had no intentions. I did not think that was even possible unless I had hundreds of thousands of followers. I'm looking at like Rumi Neely and Danielle Bernstein who have millions of followers and thinking, I am nowhere near there. I'm not getting paid anything. So this really ignited like this excitement in me to just learn everything that I could learn. And so I started to play around with connecting with brands. I learned a lot about pitching on Instagram or through YouTube videos. And I was sending brands these emails where I was essentially like, hey, I love your brand. I really want to work with you. Like, um, you know, let me know if you want to work together. It was literally the world's worst pitch email. But at this point in the industry, I don't think anyone knew what they were doing. There were not a ton of people compared to how many today are actually pitching to brands. And so this was like the best option we had, right? Like this is what everyone was doing. So I started connecting with brands with these really horrible pitch emails. And surprisingly, I was actually getting a lot of emails back. Again, the industry was nowhere near as saturated as it is now. So I just didn't have as much competition. So it was so much easier for me to send these really shitty emails and actually get responses to them. So eventually I decide, what if I had someone who could help me through this process so that I didn't have to spend so much time on this, but also so I looked like a little bit more legit. Like I wanted to look like I was like a big creator, like I needed a manager, I needed an agent. And I decided what would happen if I hired a manager? So I had a few really interesting experiences with managers, um, all very different, all really horrible. I'll just come out and say that. The first person that I hired was a manager where her style was, you hire me to send X amount of pitches from your email inbox. I'll find their emails, I'll customize each pitch, and then I'll send 100 pitches per month for $750. You have to sign a three-month contract, but I'm thinking in my head, Okay, well, I just got paid $500 for a partnership not too long ago, um, Very or $250. Someone else got paid $500. I could have gotten paid $500. Realistically, all I need is what, like a partnership and a half to be able to pay this person. And surely if I have a manager who's doing this for me, of course, I'm going to get more than two partnerships. So I signed this contract, three months, $750 a month. She's going to send out 100 pitches per month. So we sit down and we essentially start to like write down all of the brands that I want to work with. She starts sourcing the emails and everything. Um, and this is actually a little bit before COVID started. So we've fast forwarded a, a bit from here. This is right when COVID is starting, maybe a month before. So the first month of us working together, she sends out those 100 pitches and I'm like sitting, you know, Tapping, tapping my watch at <laughs> my computer, wondering like, sis, where are all the responses that I'm supposed to be getting right now? Because we sent out a hundred pitches. Like that is a lot of brands. A hundred pitches, surely I can get two responses and get paid from two of them, right? Just to make my money back. Um, that was the, the real slap in the face, like cold, hard truth that pitching is just not as easy as I thought it was. And even having a manager doing it for me where I was like, you know, coming from, uh, oh, here, I'm Kristen's manager approaching this partnership. That literally didn't make a difference. <laughs> I won't even lie. So she did this for three months. Second month was like maybe halfway through it is when COVID started. And this was a weird, weird, weird time to be pitching brands. So I, I think it was like half pitching sucks, but half COVID sucks as to why I was not getting responses. But essentially in this second month, no brands knew what they were doing with money because they were just like, well, do we spend our money on uh, influencers? Are people even spending money? Everyone just got like laid off or fired from their job. No one's in the office anymore. The world is literally in flames right now. We don't know what's going on. So no one wanted to spend money. So I wasn't getting any responses. Third month comes around, still not getting any responses. And this girl also, this was just like, I think a case of maybe me not doing proper research in looking into her services, 
But she basically just kind of like ghosted me. Her 100 pictures that she was supposed to send a month turned into like 50. And I'm on her ass kind of being like, sis, like I paid for this. What's going on? She's like, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. It was a horrible experience. Moral of the story, whether she was a horrible manager or not, she was sending fine pitches. They looked great compared to what I was sending. And I got maybe one partnership maybe and i couldn't even tell you what that is i just know that i i got something out of it but it was nothing to make my money back it was nothing to write home about i was i was like very much upset with myself for signing this three-month contract you know i spent thousands of dollars and literally got nothing in response uh so i said you know what maybe it was just her maybe she was like not approaching it like a a lot of managers will approach it differently we're like maybe they're on an hourly rate or they take a percentage and so i'm like i'm not gonna tell myself that management is not for me let me just try a different option here and so another option that i tried was working with a company who (laughs) is now out of business. Surprise, surprise. But I had friends who were at this company. So I'm thinking, okay, they're doing great. They're getting a lot of partnerships. Um, I think this is going to work really great for me. So I start working with another management company who I was responsible for paying $300 per month. And it included a certain amount of hours that they were to work for me. So basically they were clocking in and out to be like managing my inbounds. Um, but then they were also sending some pitches for me, like with whatever time maybe they had left out of that $300, or I was paying a little bit of extra money, you know, maybe $35, $40 an hour or something for them to be sending, you know, spending additional time sending pitches. So I'm fine with this. And this is like a way more legitimate company. Again, I have friends here, like I've seen it in action and I'm feeling really good about it. This very similar experience where they would send out pitches and I we switched the pitch around 50 different times to try new things. And every single time I was just like, I'm so mad at myself for spending money on paying someone to pitch for me because it's just not working. No one's responding to these pitches. No matter how many times we change this around and customize it and make it sound and look beautiful, no one is responding. And if they are responding, they're saying, send me your media kit. We'll keep it on file. And if you're listening to this right now, I know you know this feeling (laughs) because we've all gone through this 5,000 times. It's the most annoying thing, right? So at this point, I have established myself enough as a creator where I'm actually getting a lot of inbounds. And it was great. However, what I realized was there were a lot of like one-off partnerships where myself or my manager were not asking, hey, can we turn this into like a three-month partnership at a discounted rate? It was more just like, here's my rate for the one, like, let's go for it. I personally didn't even know that was an option. My management company was not asking for anything long-term. So I was getting these one-off deals, but they're not necessarily brands that I was spending you know, long chunks of time with because it was one partnership and then we were done until I decided to reach back out. So needless to say, <laughs> eventually I I said to myself, I'm not going to keep paying this $300 a month. Realistically, I can manage my own inbox. Like I'm a type A person. I'm very organized. I don't mind answering emails. I was more doing this to take pitching off my plate, which I'm just not seeing a return on all of these pitches that I'm sending out and versus how much money that I'm spending. So moral of the story is I leave that company and I start taking on pitching myself. I spend a lot of time playing around with my pitch, doing massive research everywhere on the internet, looking like, what are people saying that's working? Why is everyone telling me to pitch, to pitch, to pitch when I just don't feel like it's actually giving me back enough for the amount of time and energy that's going into it. It's so much work to customize every single one of these pitches, right? Like I'm exhausted. I can't even find any more brands to work with and reach out to because I feel like I've literally reached out to all of them at this point (laughs) and none of them have responded to me. So I, at this point, I'm pitching myself, but I'm getting some good inbound. So at least I'm making money that way. But I'm just wondering how I can get more, how I can establish myself enough where I'm not only getting inbounds, but people are actually responding to my emails, which was frustrating because, again, 
they really weren't. Aside from that, it was also just taking a lot of time. I, again, was trying to send a high quantity of pitches versus a uh, higher quality of, of how I was kind of presenting myself and how I was uh, writing my pitch and, you know, the work that I was putting into it to actually make it stand out. I'll say at this point, my success rate with pitching in terms of getting a response and actually turning it into some sort of a partnership is probably around 10%, maybe 15%, like some months better than others, mostly around 10%, which again, time suck, energy suck not not feeling good about it. This made me take a really hard look at what was actually working. And so I'm looking at it and saying, okay, I'm getting inbounds. That's good. I'm also seeing that a lot of brands or agencies all have them reach out to me more and more now versus a while back when I first got started, it was a lot of one-off partnerships. Now I'm seeing that brands are starting to want to hire me over and over again for different campaigns with the same agency or um, the same brand is hiring me multiple times throughout the year. I'm seeing that more and more companies are interested in just sticking with one creator to to go more long term with versus them having to find new creators every single time they have a campaign. And I also found that I was getting the best results when I was really making the experience like as humanized and as personalized as possible. So I would get on calls with brands where we would be talking about like ideas or what we were going to, what I was going to create for this campaign. Um, and I was just making really great connections, like friends that I made at these brands that I literally still to this day have. I was sending thank yous. Um, I even had my best friend makes cookies. I had her make cookies, boxes of cookies, custom cookies for every single brand that I worked with in 2022 um, and literally mailed them a box of cookies with like a thank you note. Like I really was going above and beyond to like show these brands that I'm a good partner. Like I'm really taking this seriously. I really value working with you. And I found that when I was like going above and beyond and really like doing things that humans on the other end at, in the brand would really appreciate on like, again, like a human level, I was getting really good responses. So what I really found through all of this was that connection, human connection was really giving me the best results. So I tried to think, how can I focus my pitch more on connection? Like how can I make human connection more prominent in my process of reaching out to brands? Because Yes, I'm customizing every pitch that I'm sending out and like telling personal stories and all of that. But again, it's just not giving me the results for the amount of the time that I'm putting in. So I thought about this. And this, once I said it, I was like, this is so dumb that I haven't thought of this earlier. <laughs> I said to myself, when we are thinking about our audience, we're thinking about our followers as quality over quantity. Used to be oh, we want to have as many followers as possible. Now we care a little bit less about followers and more about engagement rate. The people who follow us want to have conversations with us. Like we want social media to feel like actually social. It's not just about like getting as many likes and follows as possible. Like we really wanted that connection with our followers. And so I'm thinking in my head, this is after 2020. So especially we really want connection after we were all stuck at home by ourselves for a super long time, right? So I'm starting to think about how our audience craves that human connection. And then I'm thinking about how well that works, like how, how much I've been able to create just like really great, strong relationships with people who I follow or who follow me. And then I'm thinking about the way I approach pitching as a very copy and paste, customize a couple of things. Like it's so not about connection. It's literally more quantity over quality. And I'm thinking, why am I approaching these things so differently? Why am I so focused on the quality of connection with my followers, but I'm not focused on the quality of connection with my pitches? And that kind of, for me, was like a light bulb moment where I decided I need to really figure out how I can start to have a human connection with the brands that I want to work with. Because again, we're all craving it at this point. It's after 2020. Um, it's working really well with my audience. And so I'm thinking there has to be something that I can do here. So what I started to do was actually uh, started to chat with people on LinkedIn and on Twitter that worked at the brands that I wanted to 
connect with. And I started to get more opportunities. And it wasn't even me reaching out to these brands being like, hey, I'm Kristen, you should hire me like I would in a pitch. It was literally me just connecting with brands and, and kind of like, commenting on new things that were happening with them or like saying congratulations or I'm excited. And my name must have just gotten thrown in the hat because they they saw me commenting on things. And so I was like, this is kind of crazy. Like this, something is happening here. I'm on to something. And I started to play around with that a lot in 2022. And this is when the anti-pitch method was born. In 2022, my goal was I'm going to try this out for the whole year. Like we're going to really deep dive and go crazy into this, what I call the anti-pitch method and see if I really don't need to be sending cold pitches because it sounded so crazy at the time because that's all I had ever been taught was if you want to be an influencer and work with brands, you need to send cold pitches. I never thought there was another way. And so I started to experiment with this new method and it was working. And I was like, this is crazy. Why is no one talking about this? Why has no one said this? So what kind of came of this? The anti-pitch method was more about connecting with the people at the brands, really humanizing myself, making friendships, making connections. And what I found from that was brand partnerships would come. I would be, my name would be thrown in the hat for these things. When brands were casting, they remembered me and said, oh, what about Kristen? So now, years later, uh, this is 2024. This was in 2022 that I had originally done all this experimenting. I did not send a cold pitch in 2022 or 2023 and 2024. So it's been a really long time that I've been using this anti-pitch method and not sending cold pitches. And the thing with the anti-pitch method is it's not that I'm saving the uh, the amount of time, the exact amount of time that I would be spending on cold pitches because I still am working. I'm still connecting. I'm still, still spending time uh, keeping my, nurturing my relationships that I've built. It's just I'm doing it in a way that is so much more beneficial for me. Instead of me spending all my time sending cold pitches that literally amount to nothing, no responses, like they go out into the void and I never see them again or hear from anything ever again. Now I spend that time on LinkedIn. I spend that time in email. I spend that time connecting with the people at brands, continuing to nurture those connections. But the cool part is, is now I know the people. I've had conversations with the people. So when they bounce around from company to company or they're working on a new campaign, it's not like I need to land my pitch in their email at the right time for the right campaign and be the right person. Now they know me. And so when they're looking for someone, they already know my name. They can add me to this list. So me spending my time networking is really what I'm doing here with the anti-pitch method. So now I have the least amount of brands that I've partnered with, like in 2023, instead of me partnering with 50 different brands, which in 2020 and 2021, I was literally parting, partnering with like 40 plus brands each year, doing a ton of one-offs. This year, I have the least amount of brands that I've ever partnered with and in 2023. But I'm making more than I have because I'm more of a strategic partner where I'm, I really have connected with the people at these companies. I've spent a lot of time getting to know them, getting to know their companies. So now I'm more of a strategic partner on a long term basis. And let me give you a really good example of this. A lot of you have seen, if you look on my Instagram over the last couple of years, literally from 2022 until now, I've been working with Thinkific. Thinkific literally started from the anti-pitch method. I said, I love Thinkific. I want to like, you know, I really want to work with them. That's where I host my course. And so I used the anti-pitch method to connect with someone who worked in the marketing team at Thinkific. And we got on a call. He connected me with this person, that person. Before I know it, end of 22, I am getting hired for a giant partnership <laughs> It was about $10,000 worth of content that I was creating over a few month period. Um, and that was amazing. A few months later, we take some time off. I do some free or discounted things. Uh, I've done seminars for Thinkific. They created a new product called The Leap. I've been working with that for the whole year of 2023. I've been featured in their newsletter, website, socials. It's not just about me getting them to pay me once. 
I have become a strategic partner for this brand. And so this literally all started with me using the anti-pitch method. And literally at this point in time, all of the partners that I have active right now or active in 2023 are ones that I have brought to fruition from building these connections using this method. So if you're listening to this now and you're thinking, that sounds amazing. Like, please make it so I don't have to send cold pitches anymore. I invite you to join me at the Anti-Pitch Method Masterclass on Wednesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. You are probably sick of spending hours sending cold pitches to brands. Obviously, most times you're not getting a response, but you're rarely landing a paid deal from it. Let's just be honest. Your time is better spent doing something that is actually going to benefit you long term. I don't I don't want you to spend your time just setting cold pitches again that go into the void. I would rather you be top of mind for upcoming campaigns because you know the people at the brands. I would rather you generate more long-term partnerships instead of every single month saying, "Oh crap, I have to reach out to a ton of new brands because I need to find someone to pay my rent this month." I would rather you have an actual relationship with the people at the brand so that when they move companies, they can still hire you no matter where they work. So in this 90-minute anti-pitch method masterclass, we are going to, first of all, we are going to pull up live audit multiple LinkedIn profiles. So we can look at LinkedIn and say, what does your profile need to look like? What are these people doing right? What are these people doing wrong? How do we optimize a LinkedIn profile for the anti-pitch method. Second, we're gonna talk about warming up the brand. This is part of the anti-pitch method. It really includes finding the right brands to work with, starting to initiate conversation, uh, have some initial interactions with them so that they start to see your name and you're warming them up to what's about to happen. Then we're gonna actually anti-pitch a brand. I'm gonna walk you through what it looks like actually finding the right people at these brands to connect with sending your intro messages, and then what to do after you actually initiate this conversation in order to turn this into a long-term partnership. And don't worry, we're going to have plenty of time for a big Q&A so we can answer any further questions. This is 90 minutes. So to save your seat, you can use the link in the show notes below. This masterclass is the first time we've ever done this. We will not be doing this often. This is a really, really great experience for you to get an affordable, really quick and easy way to figure out how you can utilize the anti-pitch method with your strategy and your business. So you can use the link down in the show notes to get your ticket and I will see you guys next time. Bye.